Thank you. It's, it's great to be here, and, and we're all, we've had our coffee, right? So, so we're all awake slightly after a long day. It's been brilliant. First of all, I wanted to thank Jane Wales for inviting me, um, and, and to have Big Bird. Um, I wanted to tell Big Bird that I think I learned English in Iran, age three, from watching Sesame Street. So, so it just, it's, it's an important, uh, yeah. We, we used to sing all the, you know, one of these things that doesn't belong here, and, and all, those, all those things were in Tehran. Um, I started, I mean, I was a refugee at the age of 11 from, from the Iranian Revo Revolution, and I was always interested in how do you s prevent a country going from dictatorship to democracy without going through violence? That, that's really what drew me to this work. In the 1990s and my 20s, I had the audacity to think that we could actually prevent wars. Um, and I joined an, uh, an organization where we were doing this work. And, uh, very quickly, I realized that actually, because we're talking about civil wars and the international system doesn't allow for interference in the internal affairs of governments, the UN system, the Security Council, and so forth, if you see a country going towards war and conflict, it's only the civilians on the ground who are going to be pushing to prevent it. And when you look deeper, you realize it's the women on the ground who are often the first ones to stand up and say, we don't want war, we want a political solution, we, we don't want violence, and so forth. And yet they're consistently erased from history. Um, even the Nobel Prize, we've all heard about the Nobel Prize. How many of you have heard of Bertha von Suttner? She was a pacifist who was actually the inspiration behind the Nobel Prize, right? So she's been erased out of our histories. So for me, it's always been about um, and, and ICANN, as an organization, is dedicated to, to elevating the voices of women peacemakers in countries affected by conflict and crisis and extremism. We have a network of uh, independent women-led organizations now in 27 countries. We do not have offices anywhere. We have one office here in Washington, D.C. It's one room in the Carnegie Building. Um, we have a staff of six people because we don't think we need to have offices anywhere because our partners are on the ground. And all of the resources that we try to generate should be dedicated to them. So we have a fund which is about channeling money to the ground, and we call it investing in trust um, because they have the trust of their communities, they have access, they know what's needed, they can see the changes, and we are basically, the money that we enable to get to them is really the icing on the cake. They're gonna do the work regardless of whether we support them or not, but when we, and it, when we give them the money, it just goes, the impact is that much greater. So we do the fund, funding, we convene them once a year because it's really important for people to have solidarity and know that there are others like them. To do peace work is extremely dangerous. Every single one of my partners has had a death threat, either from their governments or from a extremist movement in their, in their country. They continue to do the work because they care. Um, so when we convene them, we have people, uh, you know, it's very emotional. It's, it's a lot of solidarity. It's a lot of serious issues of analysis. I mean, the depth of analysis that they can give you in terms of what's going on and the dynamics is extraordinary. And there's also a lot of uh, joy and, and loving and laughter because that's what women do when they get together. We have a lot of fun together. Um, and then the third piece of it really is that there is, we can channel all the resources that you want to the ground. If our policies at the international level are messed up, we can't put the burden on women to fix it. And, and to that point, I would just, just, just to make the, just to give you the numbers. For every dollar that we spend on peacemaking, we spend $1,885 in war making or defense or security. Now imagine if we made that $10 to $1,885, right? What difference that would make. Um, when we talk about the problems that we're dealing with right now, uh, it was interesting for me to hear the World Bank because they don't actually acknowledge the fact that we're living in a state of extreme capitalism. When you have eight men in the world having the same wealth as 3.6 billion people, and when you've had 30 years where we've told governments, don't invest in education, don't invest in healthcare, privatize, 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 but spend a lot of money on your military, as we've done in this country, no wonder the health sector and the education sector are completely messed up, right? And no wonder you get extremist or ideological movements going in and providing education because people actually want education for their kids. But it's creating social fragmentation on the ground, it's creating a, a, a fragmentation amongst the elite to the grassroots, 
And we're seeing kind of our societies unravel in, in these ways. And instead of us working for the economy, economic policy should be working for us. That's what feminism tells us, right? And, and yet, the World Bank doesn't seem to get it. So, so, so we need to be talking about that. If we're talking about Yemen, at the moment, our government, and I'm British and I live here, so I ta play taxes in two countries, which bothers me enormously, because both of them are warring, uh, in, in, or, or war makers in Yemen, we're fueling the fighters, fighter jets of the Saudi Arabians to drop bombs on Yemen, right? We can't say we're supporting, pe you know, we, we care about famine in Yemen if we're literally fueling the war. So these are the kinds of issues that, that we bring to the table because our partners bring them, and we have the privilege of living in a country so far where freedom of speech is allowed, and, and um, have the privilege to have access and, and create the spaces so that, they, so that we bring our partners to, for them to speak this truth and this very uncomfortable truth to the powers um, that we, we created something called the Global Solutions Exchange last year with the Norwegian government as a way of enabling civil society, women and youth groups especially, to have direct access to the UN and to governments to talk about education and, and economic policy and security policy and go deep into these issues, because otherwise they may think that they're listening. We have a lot of rhetoric about how important women are, but the reality is that very little is, women are not included, and, and less than 1% of the resources that are dedicated to women's organizations actually go to women's organizations in countries affected by conflict. And those, of that less than 1%, it's, it's not, it doesn't make it even a blip on the, on the scale for those that are actually doing peace and security work. So that, that's why we try and channel the resources we can. Thank you. Thank you.